Hi everyone, welcome to another CNCF uh, webinar. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how we can secure web services using Let's Encrypt, Server Manager, and all that in Kubernetes. Uh, before we get started, who am I? My name is Angel Ramirez. I'm the CEO of Quambi, but I'm also founder of uh, the Hispanic Foundation for Cloud Native, which is a place where we uh, uh, share all the knowledge about Cloud Native and Kubernetes in, for the Spanish community. I'm also part of the advisory board member of uh, the Dev Network. I also a technical advisor to some startups. And of course, I'm a certified administrator, um, Kubernetes administrator, and I'm part of the uh, team that also curates some exams for the Linux Foundation and the CNCF. Uh, something that I do enjoy uh, a lot is traveling the world with my favorite person in the world, which is my wife. Um, but that's enough about me. So let's get started with the, uh, today's agenda. So what we're going to be uh, doing today, um, before we get into the demo, which I'm pretty sure that everyone is looking forward to, uh, we might need to walk through a couple of the concepts that we need to uh, understand first. Uh, one of the first things that we're going to be looking into is what's the HTTPS and HTTP, um, what, what is this SSL, TLS, uh, especially let's try to cover that topic uh, for the rest of us, uh, people that might not be super experts in encryptions and that kind of stuff. Um, we're also going to talk about Let's Encrypt, which is the main one of the main topics on, on, on this, uh, in this webinar. And then we're going to see what's the manager, and uh, then we're just going to put all that together in, into a nice demo, hoping that the demo gods will, will allow us to have this smooth and nicely. All right, so let's get started. First, HTTP and HTTPS. Um, the best way that I found, to be honest, to explain what is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS is to basically using this uh, nice image, which is when we doing our, our browsing, when you open the browser, wherever, wherever browser you use, and you navigate to a site, um, you have to wait to do it, right? Uh, the first one is HTTP, and then you will see that all your information, all your traffic is going to be completely in plain text. So mean that what that means is like if you put in your username, your password in a, in a certain uh, website, um, that's just going to go from your computer to the server in plain text. It's, everyone will be able to see it. And the difference is when you're using HTTPS, which is definitely a, uh, the, the way to do it, but it's the, it's the secure version of HTTP. Um, then all that information that you send from your browser to your server back and forth is, in, is encrypted, meaning that uh, um, instead of seeing your username and password, they all just see a, a random uh, set of characters that they cannot decrypt or understand. So that's, that's the best way that I found uh, how to explain HTTP and HTTPS. And, but then uh, you might say, well, Angel, uh, you say HTTP, HTTPS, and then you, you're bringing up uh, SSL and TLS, what, what that even means. So the, uh, the SSL, as you can see in the bottom right of the image, is, is now in both a certificate. Um, but to, to get more in, in, in deep on that, what that means is, um, so the, the SSL is, a, is a still widely used um, uh, word for this, describing the security around the HTTP and HTTPS traffic. However, the, uh, currently is, is, is TLS the one that is being used. Um, just to try to summarize it in a, in a way that, you know, it doesn't get too complicated. Um, TLS is just the newest version, uh, version of, of SSL um, that is a lot more secure and, and of course have more um, features, but, but it's just like, a, the way that I see it, it's just an evolution of SSL. Um, but everywhere you can still say SSL in TLS interchangeably is not wrong, it's just fine. Here's some history how they were created. Uh, one of them was created by, the SSL was created by Netscape initially. Um, that was the one that was used uh, uh, by the time, and then TLS came after that by the Internet Engineering uh, Task Force. Um, and that's the one that we currently use, um, which it does have um, a lot more features. The, uh, the curiosity is that um, the SSL uh, 3.1 uh, basically is what 
it became then TLS 1.0 at that time. So that's that's where the transition uh, started. It. Um, but but the interesting part about the uh, how these SSL and TLS works is that now both devices or, or in this case the, the client and the browser have that certificate that they use to interchange information, and that's what they use to then you know using a set, a set of our key pairs like private and public keys and keys. They uh, they encrypt all the information and messages that come uh, during that uh, connection. So um, a little more about it is uh, what was involved in in, in this uh, SSL and TLS, um, you know, uh, process. Uh, and it's basically there is three main things that needs to happen. One is that you have you have to be an encryption encryption of course. That's that's what we're all we're looking for, making sure that everything is secure. Um, it had to also happen in authentication, and that, and that has to be uh, all with integrity. Um, so the, why is that? What that matters? Well, in the process, which we're going to see in, in a little bit, we we have to make sure that there's a version that we are do uh, we agree upon between the client and the server. Um, and the reason why is because right now TLS have three versions. Uh, we are hopefully in the in 1.3, but but still, those are three versions. So, um, so the first thing that happened is that they just established that connection, saying, "Okay, well, let's talk about let's talk in TLS 1.0, 1.1, 1.3, whichever is the one chosen for that communication." And then the uh, the the, the the encryption happens, uh, the, which is establish the whole cipher suite. Okay, which one we're gonna be using? Let's use X, Y, and C. Okay, cool. And that way, we're going to establish that connection. And now we know that the encryption is set. What's happening next is now they need to authenticate. They need to make sure that the identity of the server is the, is the one that it's supposed to be. Because one thing is establishing an encrypted connection, but if the, uh, the server is not the one that it meant to be for the browser to, for the uh, client to, to talk to, then uh, the encryption really is just, you, you have an encryption encrypted uh, messaging with the wrong server in it. At the end, they will still be able to decrypt that information. So that's where the authentication happens using that certificate. And last but not least uh, is the generation of the sessions keys. Um, that's what I relate to the integrity. That's the way that now you can make sure that everything subsequently uh, to that will happen in, um, in a secure way. And you're actually talking to the to, you're still talking to the right server. So that's why integrity is important there. So now, um, what was the TLS handshake? Um, so basically, the TLS handshake is what I just described uh, a few seconds ago. But here you can see a uh, nice um, graphic how that happened. So um, the, the part here interesting to, 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 um, to clarify is, uh, is the different versions which is why it's important to make sure that the version of the TLS established is the one that you want. For example, in the TLS 1.0, as you can, uh, you can see, there's more steps uh, versus the 1.3. Um, in the 1.3, uh, basically what they did, they just um, encapsulated more uh, information uh, and exchanging in just one round tip. So you don't have to basically you know, go and do seven steps. Um, so you might say, well, Angel, that's how that important. Well, I mean, it, it, you basically uh, reduce uh, the amount of uh, round tip, so you have less uh, millisecond that you need to use in, in that process. Um, I mean, maybe some systems, uh, the millisecond might not re be relevant, but in all the platforms and the distributed system, this, the milliseconds actually counts. So that that actually is the, one of the reasons. Um, so. That being said, uh, yes, TLS always is going to add latency uh, to, to your system. Now it's, it's more about deciding how you can afford and which one way you can afford. So, um, for, I mean, it, it makes sense to always be on the, on the latest TLS, um, not only because you know, it, it has more security and, and, more, and more features, also because they're working very hard to reduce that amount of uh, latency that the uh, TLS, and, uh, in this case, uh, uh, add. But now that doesn't mean that it's, it stops there because there's uh, all the technologies that are being implemented and, and uh, to to reduce that, reduce that latency. One of them being false star, which um, 
allows the servers and the client to talk to each other before the whole process uh, uh, starts. Um, I mean, of course, the, the, the one I can argue like, do do I want to do that? Do I want to have my server talking to um, uh, my client uh, and vice versa without having the whole process of handshake, um, you know, established? Well, uh, it's it's case by case. Uh, there's no way we can all say that one side fits all. But it's it's good to mention the data technology that does that. Same happened with the session resumption, which uh, if a server and a client already had a previous communication and established a uh, that, that, that encryption, um, well, you can speed that up because you already have that trust established. So um, that also helps reducing the, uh, the milliseconds um, uh, that a handshake uh, you know, uh, had to happen. So once again, uh, this is kind of like a one-on-one um, -on -one for SSL and TLS. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that there's a the uh, experts out there that say, well, they, you're missing a lot of points. Well, yes, uh, definitely, but uh, um, that probably going to be a topic for a different uh, conversation. But for right now, uh, just to summarize, uh, the HTTP and HTTPS, basically the difference is one is secure, the other one is not secure. Uh, I strongly advise to use that secure all the time. Uh, and then that secure is basically being provided by the protocol. SSL or TLS, they are completely interchangeable in terms of a uh, concept, uh, but we shouldn't uh, assume that they are entirely the same. It's just an evolution. Um, TLS is the evolution of SSL, meaning that um, I mean we should be we should be speaking TLS. Uh, hopefully, uh, um, uh, everyone should be using TLS from now on, and. Um, and the other thing is that the TLS involves a handshake. The handshake is the process how they make sure that there is uh, encryption, this authentication, and integrity in the process. So those are the three main areas that, that TLS cover. Um, so like I said, that's, that's kind of like the uh, summarized uh, version for the rest of us. Uh, and actually, that's more than enough to then go to the next topic, which is less encrypt. All right. So what is less encrypt? Well, in, if you recall what I was saying, that the TLS uh, involved with certificate, and that certificate had to make sure that the server that you're talking to is the one that you're supposed to be talking to. Well, that's coming from uh, something called the certificate authority, which is an entity trusted by the browsers and the clients that we know, yes, whoever has a certificate coming from this authority is someone that we can trust, is someone that, that definitely... Uh, knows what they're doing and everything is good. Um, before we get into the features, uh, what, what usually happens is uh, they say they're using any other provider, um, DigiCert or, or um, whichever you're using, it doesn't really matter. The process is, is a little more manual in the sense like you need to create the key pairs, you submit them and they give you back an authority and then you get all that information. And then you can use that and then uh, um, you can just set it up in your Nginx and your Apache, your web server, whichever you, you're using. And that's how the process used to be. And every time you need to do a renewal, you just do the process again. So well, what, what, what's less uh, encrypt uh, than uh, doing here? Well, definitely this encrypt is doing a lot. And that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, kind of walk you through that. The, the, the main features of less encrypt, which is one is, is it's free. Is, is, is free to everyone who owns the domain. I have to make sure that, that we understand that because <laughs> not because you, you're using less encrypt, you can just use someone else's domain, right? So you need to own the domain because in the process, which you're gonna, we're going to describe later, you need to prove that. Uh, the second is the is, is automatic. Um, definitely, uh, I agree, it's super painless. Uh, the process is very smooth. Uh, all you have to make sure is that you use, configure your, your, um, your uh, your agent, because there's an agent involved there. Um, and, and that said, you, you can do that process very automatically. And uh, you, there's a lot of even uh, CLIs that you can use. There's uh, uh, um, projects that uh, the Servbot, for example, is one of the most known uh, projects that you can use. And, and it makes your life a lot easier creating, issuing, configuring, and renewing the certificates. It's very secure, as we were talking about, about TLS, which is why it was important for me to explain a little bit more uh, what TLS means because they use the best and latest practice um, of TLS. They use very advanced te uh, uh, techniques there. 
and then they make sure that what what they doing is actually always you know uh, compliant with the um, with the most um, advanced advanced techniques. Uh, it's just transparent. Um, uh, this is a, the, when I was learning about lesson encrypt. This is something that actually um, uh, it was a surprise for me because uh, everything is a issue and revoke process. Both they are keeping in a public record, so everyone can see that what's happening. So, um, and not to get into the blockchain world, but uh, the, basically the transparency that everyone having account for uh, accountability of everyone, uh, it does make it a lot more transparent. So. Um, I, it's something that surprised me and I liked it. Um, the other one is that it's open. Um, basically, it uses a, a you know the protocol is a, is considered an open standard, um, and we're going to talk about the Acme protocol later. Um, but it's very open uh, the system and and they cooperate, meaning that is a it's a joint effort of the community, um, which is definitely something that, that I'm pretty sure that everyone uh, watching here love. Um, so a little more about Let's Encrypt, um, so how it works. Um, there is two process that is involved on the, um, in the initial validation. Um, as I was mentioning, the, the ACME protocol is the one that uh, it, it helps uh, to obtain trusted certificate for the for browsers. Um, and uh, and that's, it that's done through a, a management agent. I mentioned one. Uh, Couple of seconds ago, is Serbot is one of them, uh, but this there's a lot of them out there. If you go to the website, you will see that there's basically um, a lot of agents uh, built in different languages. Uh, these libraries, if you want to build your own, so definitely something that uh, is not tied to one thing, but uh, the process is, is is the same to all the uh, solutions out there. The first thing that you need to do, you need to prove the ownership, which is what I was referring to um, uh, in the previous slide. So if you look at the top uh, image to so basically the, the web server, in this case, yours, has to make sure to let it, you can ask Let's Encrypt, hey, I, I want to, I want to uh, you know, claim the ownership or I want to basically say, uh, confirm that I'm the owner for this uh, domain. Um, uh, let's Encrypt will be back to, to the, to the uh, agent and say, okay, well, let's, uh, let's do it, prove it. You have two ways to do it. Uh, and here are the ways that you can prove to me that you own the domain. So there are two ways. One could be DNS record, uh, HTTP uh, result call uh, on the well known URI. URI. So, in the, I mean, that is very similar to uh, a process that if you go with any other way, uh, any other uh, certificate authority, that, that you just need to provide those two, right? Um, so let's say that uh, you know once the uh, the let's encrypt goes back to the uh, um, in this case the agent says okay you prove to me in this I did this two way and then you no know, let's do it so we 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 uh, as the agent say okay I'm gonna prove it to you let me for example use a well known um, uh, URI uh, which is very simple to do uh, by the way. Um, so once we do that and, and we sign it, uh, we send it back to Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt will receive that and we'll validate, verify, of course, that using that nonce that he gave me uh, before. Because if you look in the, in the top uh, image, there is a, there's a new, um, it's a nonce that, that they sent us back. And that's the one that we used uh, to do the, the, the second part of the process. We do that, we sign it, we send it to him. He, he gets it verified and then we just put it out there. Uh, as, uh, um, for the Lesson Crypt to then be able to download it. So once the Lesson Crypt is able to download it, uh, then everything looks good and say, okay, well, you proved to me that you're the, the owner of the domain, so go ahead and you can start issuing certificates, which is the next part of the process. So to issue certificates is even more simple. Um, so once you do that, you do the PKCS um, uh, certificate signing request, um, same process. You have to, we all have, have to understand that <clears throat> in every process we have to tell the lens encrypt what we want to do, but everything had to be signed, and everything had to be definitely uh, validated by lens encrypt using those those key pairs. So in this in this process, we sign that petition of the certificate. We want the certificate for example.com, Send it back to lens encrypt. Lens encrypt say, okay, I. Um, I, I believe you, I compare it and everything looks good. So let me give you back the certificate um, 
um, after the verification happened. And for revoking the certificates, it's actually the, the same process, just in the other way. In this case, all, you, all what we're saying is, I want to revoke the certificate that you gave me. Uh, I have to sign it, send it to Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt validates that and say, okay, this looks good. You revoke the, the certificate and let me then notify uh, the CRL and or, or the OC, SP, uh, whichever in that case. Um, in that way, you know, we all, all the browsers can rely on that. Um, and the process is very simple. Now, do we have to do this manually? Well, no. I mean, Let's Encrypt says it's automatically. So um, there's, there's tools. Uh, always remember that there's a, an agent for that. So that agent will take care of that. We just need to get the configurations that we need, and it will do it. But this is actually the, the process that's going behind the scenes on that. So with this being said, um, let's, let's, let's take a, a mental pause and say, OK, well, am I ready to now use these uh, anywhere? Yes. I mean, like I said, you can just go to the, the Let's Encrypt down, uh, website, do download that, um, one of the agents, whichever you like the most. And if you're using, uh, let's say, whatever you're using, let's say a web server somewhere, a virtual server, and you have Apache and Unix, so whatever you, you feel more comfortable, you install the server bot, you configure that to with, a, with your um, web server, and he will take care of the rest. Um, now, what happens if we want to do any Kubernetes? Well, same thing. So we just download uh, whatever Nginx or web server version we want. We configure that and we deploy our application. Now, do we want to do it that way? Not really. Um, there's already something that can do it for us. Um, which is another project that I'm going to introduce now in this in this in this webinar, which is Server Manager. Uh, Server Manager was uh, developed by JSTAG, um, and uh, basically they've been doing a great job on, on this project because what this project does is just it just makes it a lot easier for for us to configure and use all these uh, certificates um, because we only interacting with what we know the best, which is Kubernetes objects. Um, so that, that, that makes the, the process a lot more easier. But of course, it goes more than that because it's not only for less encrypt. They actually do support a lot more sources. Um, less encrypt just happened to be one of them. Um, so just to give an idea what they support, they support uh, HashiCorp as well, uh, ben Benafi, uh, and they also have uh, um, uh, the private PKI, so you can create your own PKI if you want to. Uh, but even more than that, the, um, in the recent uh, versions, and, and I say recent, not like few, um, a few months ago, but I mean recent because I, I've been using Sermon for quite some time, and, I'm, and, and they come up with these uh, community sources now where I can deploy, I can develop my own uh, sources if I want to, or I can use one of the, the, the lists that the community already created, which is very, very nice and engaging because, um, you know, they say Let's Encrypt is doing the job for us, and but we want to use, uh, I don't know, our private because we are an enterprise and we want to have our own private certificates. Well, we can do that. Or if uh, there's one that we want to use, like, for example, you want to use Cloudflare. Okay, well, they do have a and the community one for cloud for it. So um, definitely, definitely this project has been growing so much. Uh, I do enjoy it, I use it a lot. So um, definitely it's worth to, uh, to stop by and, and read more, uh, not just what I'm, I'm showing here. So, well, this is, uh, this is like kind of like how it works. Uh, I wanted to show you a couple more things about that before we get into the demo. Uh, one of them is the issuer. Um, we're going to be using this object the for sure. And, uh, and, and the issue is just basically a representation of a certificate uh, authority um, in, in Kubernetes uh, object terms. Uh, they do support multiple. Uh, here, they uh, just to, to give you a couple of them, uh, they do support a CA, which is kind of the example that you see in the, in the, in the image, ACME, which is the one that we're going to be using for Let's Encrypt. And then they have cell sign, Bolt, Menafi, and Stones. Um, so this is kind of how it looks like. You just declare what you want in your specs. Uh, then you define how you want it to behave, which we're going to be seeing in a second. The second object that I want to show you is the certificate. Uh, the certificate, um, interesting enough, 
we, we were not going to create it, but we're going to look into it and see how it looks like and, and what it does. But the certificate is the way that then after you get your, your uh, authority created and all good and you verify and you own that domain, then you can create a certificate. That certificate would work with that specific um, uh, uh, CA and it is how it's going to communicate with back and forth and, and then keep your certificate uh, you know, in sync. So this is how it looks like. Um, I do have uh, here a couple of links that definitely I will, I will recommend that you guys look into a little more uh, in depth. Um, the certificate lifecycle, for example, which is the image that you see on the, on the right, uh, it's impossible to see all everything. But the reason why I'm putting it in there is because they do have a really detailed uh, uh, diagram of how the whole life cycle of the certificate works. Um, it's a lot. But definitely, I recommend you guys uh, taking a, a, another um, you know, separate reading to this uh, life cycle because it goes very, very in depth of how that process works. And then you will understand even more how they uh, you know, encapsulate all these complex processes that, that we usually go through using uh, issuing certificates and getting certificates and revoking certificates into a very simple object and uh, definitely have to give kudos to them on that. All right, so this is, uh, this is all I have uh, before the demo. So um, what, what we're gonna be doing then is uh, um, we're gonna basically now put all this stuff together. So what we learned so far about HTTP, HTTPS, SSL, TLS, in less encrypted and, and same manner. Um, couple of, uh, of things here, if you're following along, um, I'm going to be using a Kubernetes cluster in DigitalOcean. Um, you can use whichever you want. It does, it does not really matter uh, what type of uh, cloud provider you use. I just happen to be using that one because it's just simple to deploy real quick. One, um, we're going to need a domain name. Um, this, I think that's the, the, probably the, the whole point of uh, this uh, webinar is like, is, is tied to a domain, so um, definitely we we need one. I have one a name chip, which I'm going to show you guys later. The one that I'm going to be using, uh, and uh, we're going to install the Ingress uh, uh, Nginx Ingress controller. Uh, in this case, it's Nginx. We're going to install a server manager, uh, and then we're going to use a web service uh, to test all these. And uh, the web service that I'm going to be using is the uh, the Google microservice demo is like a boutique a store and we're just gonna use that one as a, as a reference. All right, so let's not uh, you know, delay this more and let's jump right into it. Uh, let me just one second so I can share my other screen and we should be good to go. All right. All right, so you you want to get to confirm that everything is we can see it. All right, so just checking the font, uh, it looks good, I guess. Okay, all right, so let, let's 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 get this started. Um, so what we're gonna be doing? Um, I'm first let me show you that we have a cluster. Um, Right, so that's it. We have a, a DigitalOcean uh, cluster. And if uh, we look at the, uh, we have some pods uh, running on default. Uh, yes, we have one, which is the Ingress controller. And I had to, I had to cheat a little bit um, because uh, the Ingress controller usually takes uh, some time to get the load balancer IP. So to avoid that, I just, uh, I, I just got the uh, at least the service. Um, the load balancer um, and the, the engine uh, in the controller in place, so I don't have to waste time on that one. But so that's what we have. So we can you can see here that we have uh, the service. We got this external IP, and uh, let's see what it is else we have there. That's it. Okay, so that's all we got. All right. So now the first step that we're gonna be doing, and I'm gonna use here my um, my guide, um, is. Um, we're going to install the actual web service. That's the first thing that we're going to be doing. Um, I have it right here in the, 
is that they I downloaded the repo, the microservice, so we just all have to do is just apply. And then we're gonna go to the release and we're gonna deploy the manifest. They, they do have this to install in multiple places uh, using Mistio uh, in, in different ways, but we're just gonna use the plain one. We just want the, 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 uh, the services being deployed. So let's deploy that. What does the being deployed? I'm gonna switch to my browser and I'm gonna show you, this is the, uh, the store demo. So we don't, we don't have any, anything right now. So it's basically responding the Nginx. That's all we have. And because we don't have any ingress or anything set up, we, uh, we have the 404 found. So everything is expected. That's, that's exactly what we want. So everything was created. Let's just check the, the pods and see if uh, we got everything that we need in place. So yeah, some of them are still not running, but we don't, we don't mind because the one that we care about is front end. That's the one that we need to, um, the one that we're going to use. And in order to use it, we're going to create an ingress. So if you look at the ingress that we have right here, let me just uh, make this bigger. Um, like a, it's a pretty straightforward ingress. Um, nothing really uh, different here to what we already know, um, except for we just declaring here. Well, not much different here. So let's just deploy this and we're gonna do the apply. And then with zero one, Ingress uh, demo. So what's the expectation is that once this is done, we should be able to go here and, and see this store. Perfect, so that's what we have. That's the store right there. Of course, it's not secure. Um, we don't have any, any type of security in place. Um, the, even if, if, if I want to force that to happen, HTTPS, uh, it's gonna tell me like, no, you cannot, but of course, uh, cool and edit by default is, is trying to put a certificate self signed there, uh, which is fake. <laughs> um, I mean, of course, we are not gonna do that. You're just gonna say no, nope, thank you. Uh, we'll go back to the uh, to the uh, store in uh, in an HTTP. So this is is this is like us now doing the HTTP version that I was saying on the first slide. We are navigating, not secure place. So if we add to car and we start doing our, our check-in, check-out, whatever we want to do, uh, that's not gonna, that's, uh, that, that, I, won't, I won't basically uh, you know, so, uh, recommend that because then you're gonna be basically navigating securely. Okay, so well, what's the next step? Well, next step is, uh, yeah, this service is uh, broken because the, one of the pods is not running, but that doesn't matter right now for us. All right, so the next step, um, well, let's, let's create the first issuer. So what is an issuer right here? An issuer, as we were looking into the, into the uh, uh, slide, uh, we just describe what type of issuer we want. Um, so it's, it's good to, uh, to mention that um, a Let's Encrypt has two, uh, two, issuer, two type of issuers. One is the staging version, sorry, two version of the issuer, staging and production. So with the staging one, you will get basically everything like you get in production minus the, uh, the validation. Um, meaning that you, you create a staging certificate, but it's not gonna be you know, trusted by the browser. So everything else will, will give you. Um, and the reason why they do that is for you to test. If you're working on your own environment, development or something like that, and you want to make sure that the whole process works, well, use this one staging because the production, it has some rate limitings and stuff like that that you want to make sure that you don't you don't cross, um, and, uh, and and that's that's the reason why staging is, is for. It. So what we declare here is just the server, which is an API endpoint, uh, the email, uh, the uh, the name of the secret uh, that we want to 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 use for for that to storing that specific information, um, and then the resolver. Uh, here I'm just say I'm just saying hey anything that that uh, is HTTP, HTTP 01, use the ingress class in Nginx, and they just use that to um, uh, relate the, um, the issuer with the ingress. And that's why I was saying that we might not create a certificate. I'm gonna show you a certificate, 
but we're not going to use the object certificate because they make it even easier for us to just relay them using the solvers. All right, so let's do that. Let's, let's apply that, that one uh, file, minus one CO2, and then we do it that. So, right, so we create the staging. So let me show you how that works, that, how that looks like. If you go to kubectl, and then we say uh, describe, and we say issuer. And then, of course, we give a, we fight for the name. So I get my, my, here you go. Oh, all right. So, first blopper. I knew it. Um, we missed something, guys. Uh, we didn't install some manager. So, how about we do that first? Um, okay. So let's go to the uh, to the README, and we're just gonna copy this. I do have already Helm installed, so I, I don't need to do the uh, the adding the repo and updating the repo. You might guys might have to do it, but in my case, I don't have to. I'm just gonna install it using Helm. Uh, while it's doing that, a uh, couple of things here, um, which I, I had to make sure that I have them. Um, make sure that you have the install CRDs um, when using Helm. Um, the, uh, e, by default, it's not enabled. So when you install with Helm, everything installs. But then, it, I mean, it starts breaking and, and something is because it doesn't have the CRDs available. So, and I didn't notice that when I was doing it. So just keep in mind that. Um, when, when you install and using the manifest, usually they do have um, uh, two, two manifests, uh, one for the CRD, one for the, uh, for the installation. So I just keep, keep that in mind. Uh, I, I disabled Prometheus because I don't have Prometheus installed, so I didn't want that to, to cause any, any, any potential issues. It doesn't, but you know, just in case, and uh, I just in, uh, got the, uh, the, the webhook timeout to four seconds, which um, right now is not relevant. So that, everything is installed right now. So if we go to uh, good CTL get NS, uh, we could we have the ASM manager. If we want to make sure that everything in the same manager is working, so we just see what is there. All the parts running, so we should be good to go. So just out of curiosity, if you go to pod um, to logs and you expect the same manager. Um, you will see that basically just uh, getting all the, uh, it's, it's gonna start looking for certificates and see if uh, he can do something about it. Um, so they just now apply the certificate that we have before. Okay, now it is created. And let's go back to see if we can get the issue. Okay, there's an issue right there. So let's, let's describe it. Uh, issuer, and let's just copy the name, and let's see what we see. Hey, okay, cool. So it's a it's a huge oil bit right now, but because I'm on the screen, but it's not that much to be honest. Um, it's basically just creating everything. Uh, looks good. That's the spec. What's important here is the status, right? So if you can see, uh, it just uh, it just created this claim, uh, unique URI. Um, sorry, this challenge, that's the challenge, uh, using the protocol ADMI, and, and then everything basically went well because it just created my account and created my, my um, and, and put a and, uh, status type ready. So that tells me that this specific issuer is all good. I mean, we're good to go. Just keep in mind, which I, I, I forgot to mention, that you have to use your own email. So and, and make sure that it's, it's, it's okay because that's what they use to create their accounts. So that could create um, some uh, you know unexpected troubleshooting. But now since we already have the um, the um, let's encrypt working and staging, can can we start using it? Yes, let's let's use it now. So to use it, we're gonna be looking into. Let me just close these ones. And we're gonna see the version three. So in the version three of the of the uh, ingress, all we're gonna do now is adding one annotation here. Just 
this one right here, 97. And we need to declare <clears throat> that we want this to also respond by TLS. And the TLS that when when it responds to TLS, then I'm gonna allow them to you know respond using the uh, the same host that I declare right here. And also I wanted to use the secret that is gonna be created here. So before we do that, let's check out if we have any secret. Let's get secret. All right. So we have some secrets, but not the ones that we didn't need. Um, there's other secrets here that we really don't, don't need, but the one. The one that we want is a store demo. Store demo is not there. So okay, let's let's move on then. And, um, and just to to show you guys, um, there's a certificate. There's no certificates, right? So we don't have any certificate. So how are we gonna create now the certificate? It's gonna be automatic. Let's do it now. <clears throat> QCTL apply minus F, and then we're gonna do version three. Let's see what's going on now. Perfect. So now we have an ingress. So if we go in and create and get ingress, uh, I miss it. I miss. I misspelled it here. We got an ingress right there. It's called demo, right? So with this, uh, with this now ingress called demo, we can go ahead and, and, and check the website now response using TLS. Let's just, you boom. So. Now the certificate authority that we're getting is a second. Is in the film. All right, let me just refresh. And see what certificate I'm getting. All right, there you go. All right, so it's just it was just some uh, some type of cache in there. So okay, so yes, I'm still getting the the connection being not recognized by the browser. Like it, the browser does not recognize who is this uh, uh, certificate authority. Uh, neither my authority. But if you if you can see here, the uh, the uh, the staging now is being the one responding. So it's telling me that, yes, Let's Encrypt is giving me the certificate that I need. It just happened to be that that's not the one, as you can see here, that they consider trusted. And that's okay. I mean, we don't, we don't need to uh, trust the, that one because it's just for testing. But it's, it's working. So basically, I'm getting a certificate. I'm getting a, 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 my keys, uh, my private key and my public key to do then uh, all these issuance and, and, and renewals and, and revokes. So let's let's see how that looks then. Um, if we know that the, we got the issuer, let's see if we can get a certificate. So voila, we got a certificate right there. So let's now describe what that certificate looks like. And it's called store demo. Awesome. So this is our certificate right now. And then um, what, it, what happened is that, you know, it created the whole certificate for me. I didn't have to do it, which is good. I, I, I basically saved one step. Um, now, what, what it's doing is, it just, if you recall the slide where we were saying we need to uh, assign what's going to be the DNS name and, and that kind of stuff. So it's right here. So it just already created the whole object for me. Creating reference to the uh, to the issuer and doing the whole process. And if you notice, it did the process of creating a certificate. So notice that that's why it's not instant. It's not like oh, I create the certificate and right away I got uh, my secure website. No, it just it does the process. You say okay, let me issue the certificate because it doesn't exist. Second, let me create a store that new private key, get the temporary secret in place then create a new certificate request, which is another object that definitely I recommend uh, further, uh, further read, reading on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the website. But I'm getting that done. All that for me, and at the end, I get the certificate being successful issued. I got my new certificate, which that translates into a secret into this store demo 
a Lambda Kubernetes. So if I get that and say, well, let's ins inspect what we are getting here, and inspire the secret, um, store, look at this. So now uh, this, this secret that right here is basically storing some metadata that that's the one I uh, definitely use um, to keep in sync with the certificate and the, and the certificate request. But I get my two certificates. This is it. So now I, I, I basically can, and that's, that's the way that the ingress is relating now to the, uh, to the uh, um, certificate and the key. Because if we recall uh, uh, on the ingress, he says that he's, talk, he's expecting this secret name, but I never created that secret. Um, but it's in there because the whole chain process uh, created, done by Sir Manager is doing most of the work for me. I mean, that's, that doesn't mean that I cannot do it manually. I can. There's a way for you to do it manually. You can do your own specifications, all that. They're not stopping you doing that. But this is this is more than enough. Like, that's not what I need. Okay, so um, now we got the, the, the staying working. We're good. This, it's time to go to production. Let's, let's move on and, and get into production. All right. So for that, all we have to do is just create a different issuer. Um, we need to now create the issuer for production. If you notice the difference, it's just that the, the, the other one says staging. This one does not have staging. So that's the only thing. So let's, let's apply that real quick because, uh, I mean, we already talked about that. So. And let's do the CO4. All right. Perfect. So we got the uh, lesson clip plot created. Let's inspect it real quick. So we, we know what we're talking about and we're dealing here. And in the issuer, and let's just get the right. Same as before, he's just doing the whole process, uh, doing making sure that uh, you know this uh, this an act right here. That if we if we just click here, um, you just open a different browser. Give me one second. It's supposed to be here. That's my uh, my act right there. So of course the method is not allowed because it's not doing it's not supposed to be doing it like that. But that's 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 the API uh, responding. Okay. All right. So then we got here the uh, that it says that it's being uh, created the account. It's being registered. It's, it's it's good. It's ready. Let's do it. All right. So with that, the next step was to update the ingress. Um, the ingress uh, for my website. So let me show you how that looks like. Same thing. So the ingress, it doesn't change much except for this. The only thing that we're changing is, okay, I want you to now use the less encrypt production version, not the staging, but everything else is still the same. I'm not changing anything. I want the ingress to be the same. I want the same secret name, no problem, all right? I mean, you could change the secret name if you want to, but that, I mean, in this case, it doesn't really matter. So let's now apply uh, the uh, five, and let's just give it a second. Now, while we're doing that, I want to show you something real quick. Search manager and see if we can see it. Uh, Lots. And let me show you how the search manager actually works. So there's a lot there. I'm sorry, it's, it's hard to see, and I know. But if you notice, he <clears throat> he's doing the, the challenges. It's the real one. So it's saying, hey, found one existing DSTP resolver for the store demo. It's related to the kind of service, and, and it's just getting all this information in relationship, and then it's going to be doing the self-check and that kind of stuff. So if we put it with the minus F, you might be able to see it in, 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 in live. So, and that's what it's doing. So um, I want to show you the actual challenge. Um, please apply your change. No longer, the challenge in work not only exist. So it's doing all that process of uh, doing the challenge, which is great. So that's, that's perfect. So in the meantime, let's check the website real quick and see if uh, we got already the, the good version. There you go. So 
I mean, it was pretty fast, so we couldn't catch the whole process. But um, if you can see here, everything starts here on the certificate request when he started getting and say, hey, I want, I want a new certificate. Uh, and it's for this specific uh, version of the API. It's creating all the challenges and doing the process right here. And then, you know, it's, it was fulfilled. So it was done. But what's the result of this? Well, we now have a secure connection. If we're going to look at the valid certificate, it says that I'm using the ISRG um, uh, root X1. <clears throat> uh, and then I can see here that my store demo is trusted by my browser. And uh, voila, happy everyone. Now, now our, our traffic between my browser and the server is entirely encrypted using the latest and greatest and the and they are, uh, you know, most advanced techniques uh, that Let's Encrypt offers. And I basically had to do better than anything. Um, everything was mostly done by the same manager, and in this case, that talks to the Let's Encrypt. Um, and I think that this is, a, uh, this is it. This is where I wanted to show you uh, um, uh, how to secure your website um, using the Let's Encrypt and some manager. So, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, you can reach out to me on any social media, uh, as I was saying on the uh, on the slides. Let me just go back real quick to the slides. And share that. So that's it. That's all. That's all I wanted to show you guys. And um, uh, like I say, more, more than happy to answer any question that you may have at any given point. Uh, just just reach out to me on 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 any social media. Uh, you can let me just put this back online one more time, just in case. You can find me as at ar for mirrors. And um, well, thank you so much for for the time uh, and uh, enjoy.